On my last day in Turin, I woke up in the hotel feeling excited to leave the city and back to Cuneo for the next leg of my journey. Before departing, I went to explore the breakfast offerings. So good morning, it's hopefully the last day in Turin. Now we are going to explore the local breakfast, which is here. Rather than being a self-serve buffet, there was a waiter behind the counter who guarded all the good stuff. Can I get eggs and ham and cheese and, and salam as well? <laughs> Everything. How many eggs? Uh, three. I eat what I could without just breaking the bank for the, this hotel. While the quality was high, with delicious treats like ice cream, donuts and cakes, it resulted in excessive plastic waste generated by using prepackaged supermarket products. So after a very weird breakfast where it was very awkward to ask for more food because they give you just one plate of cheese, that's all. And you have to repeatedly go there and ask them, hey, can I have more? And uh, they are. Mm, okay, here you have one plate, uh, so it's 10 and uh, we are going to Cuneo, 120 kilometers far away, uh, very uphill, but it will be a great exercise and uh, now it's time to go. Alright, I decided to go for Burger King first because I cannot just live on croissants for breakfast. So once we leave Turin, then there will be literally nothing. So that's a good call, I think. So I would say Turin is one big old town that spans across uh, the whole city. And after the old town, there's a Turkish neighborhood. That's all I saw from exploring Turin in the past few days. So I'm approaching back to the point where I stopped my Eurovelo 8 tour, which is here. And now we are continuing south to Cuneo. That's the plan. So just bought uh, Burger King. I'm so full to the point that uh, <laughs> I kind of regret eating anything at all. As I made my way, I noticed an interesting replica of a medieval village along the riverbank. Look at this kind of fortress on the other side of the shore. So nice. It's so nice. So what you see behind me is a real life replica of a medieval village that represents how Italians live during medieval age. I wouldn't say that it's a complete replica, but it looks real. No way, there seems to be a swimming pool. Love to take a dip. Been two weeks since uh, I left sea coast. I tell you one thing I don't miss riding through the beach is the sand. <laughs> it's uh, impossible to ride fully loaded Brompton even with the smallest sand dune. This seems like an old school looking shopping mall. <laughs> Feels like 80s. So you know this is cycleway as well. The stairs with uh, Ooh. Okay, we got it. Now I think we are in the calmer parts of Turin, in some kind of uh, suburbs. Completely empty, except for some minorities uh, hanging out in the streets. It's uh, very calm. So this park is perfect for camping. I see some people just laying down on the grass. Seems like they are trying to set up a camp here. It's a huge park and there's no one. 
just few joggers and that's it. The path leading out of city became much more chill, going through peaceful parks and forests. It was huge contrast to the urban areas I had just left behind. There's some kind of grill party. Very nice. With families. It smells good. It smells like burger or something. Would love to join them on one or two burgers. So this is where minorities hang out on a chill Sunday afternoon. There's a workout park as well. There's some kind of a castle. This is very generous road, which is off the limits for the cars, but for the bikes, not so much. Whole seven kilometers from that castle till uh, south. I think I can uh, test my speed limit here. It's perfectly flat. It's paved, plenty of uh, space. I think we can consider being out of touring finally after 20 kilometers. So still at least 100 kilometers left to Cuneo. So this is a natural swimming pool or fishing pool, more like fishing pool. This is the Perle bike stop with a vending machine. Just to check the prices, Euro 35 for juice, Schwabs. It does not take cards. And there's camera, of course. Kind of expensive, but I would love to get uh, lemonade or something. Ah, let's go on. I have to say the road from Turin is so far very delightful. You can expect going on a cycleway all the way for tens of kilometers with plenty of shades and stops with the water fountains every kilometer or two. And it's very crowded, so you definitely feel like not being stranded, but being like uh, on a tour with other people as well. So not alone. But so far I enjoy this part of the route 10 times more than uh, the path from Alessandria to Turin. The intense heat made me seek protections in gazebo along the route where I took a refreshing nap. Guys, check this out. This is the first time I see mountains in the background during Eurovelo trip. It's so beautiful and so terrifying. <laughs> Can imagine how to get with the bike on the top. Must be at least 1600 meters above sea. The scenery looks incredible riding through this road in between the cornfield with the mountains in the background. Feeling hyped by sunny weather and beautiful landscape, I got back on my bike with the music playing from my phone, really excited for the journey ahead. Get finger across that Inns Mercato is open, but yeah, there are cars, there are people going out. Yes, I'm going to buy some fruits and Coca Cola. Then I was pleasantly surprised when doing some grocery shopping just 40 kilometers outside of Turin to find the prices were significantly cheaper than in the city. So, according to the prices I see here, everything is so cheap, guys. And the or around euro or two euros and this is just 40 kilometers out from Turin but the truth is cola is quite expensive here two liter bottles for four which means two euro a bottle so I think I will buy Pepsi because it's so much cheaper so I bought Pepsi and those weird shaped peaches cheapest yeah but still good. I have to say the ladies in these inns Mercato are very lovely and it's so cheap just 40 kilometers out from Turin definitely uh, give it a shot make a detour and top here because 
they deserve to get the business. So I don't know how they genetically modified this peach to be this shape, but it's more crunchy and it's sweeter. It tastes overall better than normal peach. Wow, there's big tower and very nice anti theater. Huh? Seems there's wedding going on. Very big wedding. Look at those sports cars with parking here. I see Lotus Ellis. Really nice wedding. Must be someone popular here. As the hot weather persisted, I stopped to envy the locals enjoying a refreshing dip in the river. Again, another melon bar with melons. Oh man, I'm stuffed with uh, those beaches. I have to say, those remote towns are really magical with those architectures. Reminds me of Bruges in Belgium. Another nice village. It's 7 p.m. I think I should start looking for a camping spot again. It's kind of tiring. <laughs> after so many nights in hotel to again uh, deal with this stuff so we have two hours until sunset so so far i don't see many good spots there are mostly cornfields and uh, residential areas this is incredible view guys we are heading straight toward mountains the landscape around me was drastically different from what I've got used to over the past few weeks as I rode nearer to the mountains in the distance. This also meant less daylight remained as the sun disappeared earlier behind the peaks. And we are entering Barge. I don't know man, but still I'm worried about finding a camping spot. We have to leave this road as soon as possible. At 7 p.m. it was time to start scouting for a camping spot for the night. This asphalt parking lot looks ideal for stopping a camp, but uh, it's uh, very well fenced. Look at those cows, look so cute. This seems like some kind of a castle. I would love to camp <laughs> next to it. Or we might just camp here. Hey, look, a stray cat. Come here, come here. She wants to be pet. Seems uh, dirty. So we are at Viale Tafarda. Maybe it's like a hotel with a restaurant or something. Looks very classy and old. Okay guys, another shady route. I just hope I won't get stuck here. It seems like no one visited this path for a very, very long time. Guys, look at those big peaches. So tempting to just go there and grab one. There are a few of them laying on the ground. But yeah, it's not our property. But it's so tempting. I believe they are sweet and uh, tasty. So quick update, it's already past 8 p.m. Sun is 
already hide it behind those high mountains it's getting dark and i'm still stuck in this maze of fruit fields so i have to move on because there are cameras there were signs that this is monitored area and those haciendas where those farmers live are nearby and the thing is every farm has at least two or more dogs that are really loud they smell you for miles away it happened to me in ferrara i heard them barking the whole night by 9 p.m i had to take my chances by staying below on what seems to be private property near a farm rather than continuing up the hill so it's already 9 p.m and i think it will be dark soon and i don't have time to go to the woods on top of the hills it's too far so yeah i think i will camp here on this open field it's definitely a private property i'm quite exposed there are farms over there and i saw some people walking uh, next to this bush yeah there are some voices as well so i think i won't use tent to, tonight uh yeah just just bb and I will just lay down here but I have to wait for complete darkness and then I will set up my sleeping system okay guys check at my upgrade I bought uh, a bug net I set up my bivy and new dedicated bug net a major upgrade from my previous setups using a bug net from hammock then I snuck in knowing I'd need to wake up extremely early in order to conquer the 90 kilometer journey to Cuneo the next day but more about that in the next episode